Yes. Wednesday, March 16th. For those of you who are unaware, tomorrow is St. Patty's Day, oh, which is, is why I'm wearing my Yoda tie to get ready for the green, because tomorrow's National Green Day. Oh, I I was just trying to help those of you who are trying not to lose points through choices. Let's see. From there, fr sorry, hiccups. Friday's quiz covers the stories from this week. We will wrap up Blue Sheet today, answering the final question that connects to it. Uh, let's see, from there, um, Jim did that one Friday's. Oh, uh, friend list is now officially closed as far as the Camp T friend list goes. I had about 25 kids who did not turn in a friend list. If you did not turn in a friend list, that's fine. It just means that you let me pick your friend group for you. My goal is, if people requested you, I will put you into that group. And I'm assuming the people that requested you are hopefully a friend of yours. If you did not turn in a friend list, and you would still like to turn in a friend list, I will accept it in exchange for one Simpson sheet. And you can do it again, for an example. You still get the points for the Simpson sheet, but I figure this way it shows me how concerned you are about turning in new friend list. But that is up to you. Um, and then for some of you, you did turn in a friend list, but everyone you had listed did not have you listed because I went through and matched up everybody last night to see if your friend list matched up from there. You do find out who's in your group, just won't be until coming up after spring break. The reason being kids who have not turned in permission slip, I can't put into a group yet, but I still have kids turning in permission slips. So my groups keep changing. So as soon as we get past spring break, we stop taking permission slips and then I can lock in groups. I can tell you your groups now if every kid was responsible enough to turn in the slip, <laughs> but they're not, so I can't. Bruh. So as soon as we get those turned in, then we're good. So we're still waiting on that issue. So what if everybody, after? Other than that, uh, we'll do our best to try and help you out as far as the camp group thing goes. Carrington, would you like to yell at me about a question? Yes. What's up, Carrington? So after spring break, huh? well, then will you tell us? Yeah, which is literally what I got done saying. What a good use of your points. I feel this. You Are you shaking your head? That's how I feel, Carrington. All right. We are going to pick three more people to give speechy thing today. Then we're going to start killing kids and take a tour of the underworld. Oh, yay. Trust me. Oh, we're going outside. And then hopefully... We're going to get time to also give you some stories about other people who made poor choices, and we're going to get into killing other people. Can I, can I, can I, right. Home children, we're going to pause for a moment so we don't have to have kids get embarrassed, and we'll come back to you. All right, back to here. I want to do the speedy rewind of yesterday, and then we'll get into today's thing about killing people. Just want to, since this shows up on Friday's quiz, just trying to make sure it's in your brain. All right, going outside. So... Yeah. With Operation Pandora, let's see. Uh, who is it that Zeus has create and craft her? What does he make her look like? Aphrodite. Aphrodite. Uh, what is the special thing that Curiosity. Zeus puts into her brain? Curiosity. Curiosity. Um, what is the sharp object that Mr. Broviak takes away from the children? Scissors. Scissors. Good job, because if I see scissors, I take scissors. So that'll be the way, because apparently we have issues with scissors. No, you do not. Guess you issues of bringing glass here to school. Who is it? Oh, from there. Who is it that Pandora gets to marry? Uh, 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 <laughs> then <laughs> Zeus has the gods fill a box or a jar. What do they fill it with? Good evil and evil. Well, what are the fills up with? Except for Athena. What does Athena put into it? Oh. 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 And then... Why does Pandora open the box? Curiosity. Curiosity. Who gets blamed for all the evil? Pandora. Who was actually responsible? Zeus. There you go. So we're going to make sure we're good to go from there. Now, we're good to go from that story. So at this point, we're going to talk about now that we have humans and humans have evil, now we get to start sending people to the underworld. The underworld. <laughs> With this one, and to bring it up, hell does not exist in Greek mythology. It's a Christian idea. In Greek mythology, there's a whole different thing that we'll get into. Okay. So first step. So that means... 
So let's let's say that, that for whatever reason, um, Destiny makes a poor choice in class, and his teacher snaps. And, sorry, her teacher snaps and ends up stabbing her multiple times with a wooden stick, thus killing Destiny. When that happens, Soul pops up above Destiny's body, but the only way for Destiny to get down to the underworld is that God has Hermes. to lead Destiny down. Hermes. That would be Hermes. And Hermes' job was to run around and collect all the souls that were out there. He grabs Destiny's little soul, flaps in the wind, takes her all the way down. And it was supposed to be this big, long maze of a cave system that was hard to get through. Drops off Destiny's little soul into a waiting room. Destiny doesn't even get to go straight to the underworld. There was like a pre-underworld that they would end up going to. Because before you get to the underworld, which is down here, there's this large underground river that would separate the waiting room from the underworld. Sticks! And, and what's the river called? Sticks! Sticks. And it's a girl! And this no. is where the river Sticks comes in. There's multiples down there. That's a different river. Once Destiny is down there, she can't cross river because as soon as she tries to dive into the water and go splash, splash, it melts and oh. kills her. And as soon as that would happen, like a video game where you reform, like, doo -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee -doo -dee. and where will Destiny reform? Sticks. And the island as island. A, the thing. Back over here. Yeah. So like a video game, as soon as Destiny dies and tries to swim across, would reform back into this area. There was only one way for anyone to get across the river. There was a boat. So there was a ferryman or a boatman whose sole job it was, and he was a titan, to take souls from this side down to the other side. The ferryman or boatman's name was Charon, C-H-A-R-O-N. He was a titan, and his sole job was taking people from this side down to here. Now, he does not work for free. So if you are wanting to get down here, if Destiny wants to go from the waiting room to here, there was something you had to give to Charon, which was... Free currency? Yeah. It was a gold coin. At the time, they were called drachmas, but essentially it's just a gold coin. Now, the problem is, Destiny's dead, so it's hard to get a gold coin. So the way the Greeks believed it worked is when Destiny dies, Mama and Papa Destiny would then have to open up their mouth like a little piggy bank, and you take gold coin, cram it inside, close the mouth back up, and when Destiny gets down to this little waiting room, would spit it out, wipe it on the sleeve, now you have a way to get across. Destiny would walk over to Charon and be like, gold coin, hand it over, and you are good. If Destiny doesn't have a gold coin, would have to wait in a line. And the way the Greeks believed it was, there was this really long line of people who did not have gold coins. And you would just have to wait, because every day, Charon would go back and forth. And if you had a gold coin, you went to the, it's like King's Island Gold Pass. Uh, if you had that, you got to go to the front of the line. If you had gold coin, you got to the front of the line. If there were no gold coin people to go across, Charon would open up the boat to anyone else in line. So, without a gold coin, you might have to wait days, weeks, years, depending on how long that line was, to get from one side to the other. Let's say, Carson is a great fighter who goes out and into a battle. And Carson's out there like, I'm Carson the Mighty! And Carson's out there slaying people left and right. Like Levi. Carson dies on the battlefield. When Carson dies on the battlefield, there's no one to put gold coin in Carson's mouth. So when Carson is dead, they're just stuck in this little area without any way to get across. So what the Greeks believe is Mama and Papa Carson. When, after they have passed away, they would then seek out someone else's family. And let's say Destiny dies shortly after. Carson's family would then go talk to Destiny's family and go, Hey, um, our child died, great warrior, we had no way of putting a gold coin in the mouth. Can we put an extra gold coin in your kid's mouth? And most fans would be like, yeah, not a problem. So they would take the gold coin, carve into it like, Carson, we love you. And then they would put the extra gold coin into Destiny's mouth. Destiny would get down there and go like, whoop, poop. Back a second one, whoop, poop. Carson, who's? And Carson's like, that's me! And come running over there and grab the gold coin. Like, I go across! 
and would be all excited. Now Carson and Destiny get to cross to go to the other side. So it's like a bird. Yeah. Some families would end up cramming the mouth full of gold coins. Because <laughs> let's say when Destiny dies and the family's like, we want Destiny to have lots of friends in the underworld, they would open up the mouth and cram it like a piggy bank and just <laughs> pour in gold coins. And then when Destiny got down to the underworld, it'd be like a slot machine going off. <laughs> and all these gold coins would come out, and Destiny would just walk around like making it rain. It's like, oh, I got friends! And throwing gold coins at people like, come on, crew! And they would all come across together from one side to the other. Then you get to the far side, and Grant has a quick question. Okay, so in this chart, uh -huh. which is completely inaccurate. It is, it's not to scale. Why? This is the door to the mortal world. Uh huh. And then Willow Sticks is all the way over here, yeah. and then here's the door to the underworld. I know, it's a weird why, picture. And why does the one that looks bad isn't Sticks when Sticks is the poisonous? I've wondered the same thing. It's a weird picture from there. What? Sorry, we had to take a quick time out. We're back now. So now, once they have crossed to the far side, and both Destiny and Carson now go to here, we get to the next guardian of the underworld. And here is a large living creature, which was this giant three-headed dog, whose job was to protect the underworld area. <laughs> if you guys saw the first Harry Potter, Fluffy, the big dog that was yeah, dying, that comes from Greek mythology. Now, Charlie, if you keep trying to bother him, I'll put you in the hallway. He's trying to be good. I'm trying to help out. I saw him. So, Fluffy has an actual name in Greek mythology. Close. Cerberus. And I've seen it spelled a bunch of different ways. Cerberus or Cerberus or Cerberus. So anyway, name or something like that. Big three-headed dog. The dog's job was to prevent any living thing from coming into the underworld. Because Hades wanted nothing to do with anything living. Dead things, he was fine with. They don't talk a whole lot. But living things bothered him. So let's say Allie is now upset because both Carson and Destiny are gone and Allie is sad in class. And she decides that she wants to go down to the underworld to rescue them. And Allie's like, all right, I'm going to spend the next several months finding out where the secret tunnel is that gets down to the underworld. And she goes and finds the tunnel, gets her gold coin, grabs her sword, and she's like, I'm Allie the Great! And she goes running down to this underworld, <laughs> finds the path, finds the big open area, gets her gold coin, elbows people out of the way, runs over to Charon, donks him in the head with the gold coin, stands on the front of the boat and is like, let's go! And goes all the way across to the far side, jumps off, and goes, Destiny and Carson, I'm here! As soon as she sets foot here, Cerberus would smell her livingness and would attack and just go, punk, and eat her. And as soon as Allie gets eaten, where does she reappear? Tartarus. The respawn. Right back over Tartar here. Sauce. And now what's the problem? Okay. She doesn't have no another coin. coin so no she, gold coin. She has to wait. So now Allie is stuck over here, and Carson and Destiny are like, oh no, just, we miss Allie. Like so and Allie's like, no. Unless she may have been smart and saw Big Dog running at her, and was like, oh no, poor Char And then like throw a gold coin into her mouth. And that could certainly be an option. And then she reforms and was like, oh, well, did no she more already give her, class. Did she, and then she get across from did there. Did she already give her gold coin to Charon? Maybe she had a second one. She's Maybe rich, bling bling. So then we get to this side down here. The name of this area was called the Esphobal Fields. That was their version of like the Christian idea of hell. Except there was no demons, there's no fire, there's no poking people with big sticks. It was just a big, open, empty cave with a dude sitting on a throne, that dude being Hades, Hades. and a chick sitting on a throne being Aphrodite. Aphrodite. No, Persephone. Oh, Aphrodite. Persephone. Persephone. Beyond that, Persephone. there were just dead people. And the idea was you would just wander around this big, dead area cave. There was no torture or pain. It was just boring. I'm you just fun. walked That's around fun. going, there's a rock. You there's a rock. Yo, oh, I look, over oh, there's a rock. And that's, oh, wait, never mind. if you were a great person who went around like saving babies, you went to the Espoto Fields. If you were a horrible person mm -hmm. and you were known as like Bobby the Baby Punter and you just kept going like, baby, punt, you would sail, go to the Espoto Fields. Gods did not care what humans did to other humans. You would still just show up in that same area no matter what. Wow. 
unless you did something to anger Zeus. Now, instead of making humans mad, if you did something to make Zeus mad, he came up with a special punishment for you. And he had a location for all the people he specially punished. That place being? Tartarus. Tartarus. And who's already in Tartarus? Kronos! And the monsters. But no, Not the monsters. Oh, no. All the titans who fought against Zeus oh, yeah. that he threw down there. And so, but humans that get put there don't get thrown in the pit. Zeus would specially design a torture for each human who gets put down there. And yes, I do have stories of humans who go down there. Tantalus, Sisyphus, Ixion, and Dionysus, and we're going to hopefully get to them in a moment, because they're really fun stories. Now, to get put into Tartarus, it was not being a bad person, it was doing something to make Zeus mad. Like, for Zeus, if you went out and got like a brand new pair of Air Force Ones, and was walking around going, look at my kicks, and you walked up and went right across the front of them, he was like, oh, dog, it's on. And then that's how you would get thrown down there. But other than that, he didn't really care about the humans. Unless you did a great thing in battle. If you did something that was so impressive that even the gods noticed you, there was a good place, sort of like their version of heaven, where if you went above and beyond to the point where the gods noticed and went, holy cow, did you see what this person did? They don't deserve to be in a spoke of fields. You would go to a place called the Elysian Fields. The Elysian Fields wasn't even in the underworld. There was a long tunnel that went all the way to the edge of the world. It was behind the mountains, not where the big ugly monsters were. It was on the other side of it, the western side. And it was outdoors. It was full of a meadow. And it was said there was like bunny rabbits and little butterflies going around all over the place. That'll and it was nothing but happiness. And you could go there and spend time running around. And it was a reward for doing a good thing. But more than that, if you got sent to the Elysian Fields, you could choose to be reborn. It was one of the only ways that they believed in reincarnation, where you could choose to become a human all over again and go through the whole process. Zeus set up a special deal with the fates, would give you a whole new stream, whole new body, and a whole new life, and you would live through everything again. But you would not remember what happened in your previous life until you died. Problem is, if you were reborn, went through your life, and then just lived a normal life, you would spend eternity down in this area. So you had to decide which was more important, staying here or getting to live as a human again. Most people chose to live here. But if you got reborn and were awesome enough to get sent here a second time, now things get fun. what? If you can do it one more time and get sent to the Elysian Fields three times, meaning you have three lifetimes where the gods are impressed by you, you don't go here the third time. You You're get to go to a whole new place oh. called Isle of the Blessed, and you become a god. And it was thought that they would give you nectar and ambrosia, and you got to become a titan, and you got to live with the gods up on Mount Olympus. And it became like this great thing to choose to be here. And I can find stories. There's a lot of heroes who go to the Elysian Fields. Problem is... I can't find any story of someone who's gone to Isle of the Blessed. I find references to it. They talk about how to get there. They talk about why it's there, but I can't find like a story about like Bobby the Great who manages to Just make it there. One. So except for Jose. Jose went there because everyone loves Jose. Jose the Hall of Pena? Uh, Jose the Hall of Pena. And so that is sort of how the whole underworld thing works. Go ahead. Okay. What was the place that the bad humans went to? Tartarus. Well, you said it was a place in Tartarus, maybe. There was in Tartarus, but the Tartarus, remember, was a giant room with a hole in the middle of it. And so they would be around the outside of that hole. There's like little spots around it. Yeah. So they would just be like that. So the two things, like, um, making uh, sure that humans don't go into, like, the other one would be Cerberus and a gold coin. No. Cerberus and why could you not just run from here to here? The water. Because yeah. of the water. I mean, you could, but it'd get kind of weird and melty. Two things for you. For the map, you can get your own copy of it if you want it. I put a copy of that same map up on Canvas if you want to go to map. The other thing is, the stories that I'm getting ready to talk about 
I'm putting two questions on the quiz from those stories. They are optional. If you don't want to read them, you don't have to, but it does make it tough to get an A. I'm putting them on there for those kids who want to push to get an A on quiz, read the stories. They're short, they're all of like half a page or something like that, and they're all about people making poor choices and getting tortured. If you don't want to read them, don't it's read like them. Lucifer. It just makes it tougher on the quiz. Next week's test, I'm gonna put four questions from there. So I just figured I'd give you a heads up. Those of you who don't mind Greek mythology and want to aim for an A, you're going to have to go clicky, clicky, reedy, reedy. If you don't care, don't worry about it. It's just two questions. It won't kill you. Nick? So when did Lucifer come in? Christianity. So Lucifer does not exist until you get to Christianity, which is much Lucifer. later. I beat up Lucifer. I keep doing Grant, you'll have to win. <laughs> okay, but the, it's not a question. Okay. The Lucifer something is made out of fire, that's why it looks like that. Makes and sense. both Lucifer's sticks and whatever goes into the underworld. Yeah, that's and, a weird poster. But this one also goes around the underworld. Which I've not. That's, there's things on that one that aren't really as mainstream mythology, but I still like the poster. Yes. How far away is Greek mythology with Christianity? Like how We're going to talk about that next week, actually. That's a thing coming up. So here are the four stories to give you guys a little preview of what they're about. So there are four groups of people who get sent that, well, there's a lot of them, but four really fun ones that I want to get into. One were the Dionysus. There were these 50 sisters that Zeus decides he wants to give as a present to these 50 brothers because these 50 brothers were the son of a king who was his son. And he's like, you know what I want to do? I want to be really nice. And so he goes and collects these 50 sisters and goes, you are going to marry these 50 brothers as my reward to them. And the girls go, no, we don't want to. And Zeus goes, <laughs> I'm not asking. And he forces the 50 girls to marry the 50 brothers. So the girls come up with a plan. And they all talk to each other and go, all right, on the night we get married, we're each going to go and take a dagger and stab our husband in the middle of the night because he can't do anything to all 50 of us. So all 50 of them, the night of their wedding, take a knife and stab their husband in the middle of the night except for one. One girl actually falls in love with her husband. He's like, I actually kind of like this guy. He's not nearly as bad as you guys make him out. She refuses to do it. The other 49, next morning, they come out and they're like, oh no, my husband tricked and fell on a knife in the middle of the night four times. That's awful. And Zeus gets upset. He's like, you know what? This was set up as a personal reward that I set up. You guys went behind my back and killed your husbands. So he sets up a personal torture for them involving water. Tartarus. I'm just not going to tell you what it is yet. Then, Ixion. Ixion is a son of Zeus, but not Hera. One of Zeus's many friends outside of it. And he had a human mom. And Zeus liked Ixion. He thought this was this really cool guy, so he would invite him up to Mount Olympus on occasion, let him drink nectar and ambrosia. And then one day, Ixion is walking around Mount Olympus when he sees Hera. And he was like, hubba, hubba. And he decides to start flirting with Hera. Oh, and Hera wants uh, none of it. So she goes and tells Zeus, hey, this dude you brought up here, he keeps flirting with me. And Zeus is like, come on. No one is that stupid to try and flirt with you. She goes, I'm not kidding. He keeps trying to flirt with me up here. So Zeus goes, all right, let's see what you're talking about. So Zeus goes and creates a cloud version of Hera out of special cloud that looks just like her and then blows so that she goes like down the hallway is like a little cloud. Ixion sees this cloud version of Hera and goes running up to it. It's like, come here, baby, and runs up and grabs her. And when he does, she poof, disappears because she's a cloud. When she disappears, Zeus is on the other side. And he was like, did you really just try to hit on my wife? And Ixion goes, um, hey. And Zeus comes up with a special punishment for him. Sisyphus is a story about a guy that tricks Hades and locks him in a closet. And he ends up tricking Hades, locking him in a closet for a week, and nobody can die. But the first story we're going to get to is Tantalus. Tantalus is our first is fun story. Jesus? So with Tantalus, you guys know the word tantalize? No. Yeah. So 
Oh, tantalize. Just annoying um, one. So tantalize means to have a thing just outside your reach that you want to get to but can't quite get to. For many of you, it's like 50 B points is the thing that's tantalizing. You want the 50 B points, but every time you get close, it seems to slip away from you. That comes from this story. So Tantalus was another one of Zeus's sons who was a king. And Zeus would invite Tantalus up to Mount Olympus because he really liked this guy, thought he was pretty cool. And Tantalus would come up all the time. Well, one day, while he's up there running around Mount Olympus, he hears a rumor. He doesn't know if it's true, but the rumor says if gods eat human flesh, it was poisonous and could kill them. And he finds that fascinating. He's like, I thought gods were immortal and nothing could kill them. But this rumor says human flesh, if it ever goes into their system, is enough to kill them. He goes, I wonder if that's true. So he decides to test it. So he comes up with a plan to see if the gods are really immortal or not, or if they've been lying to him this whole time. So he invites all the Olympians to his house. He goes, hey, this coming Friday, I'm going to throw a giant dinner party, and I want you guys all to come to my house, and I'm going to throw a party. They're like, all right, cool. So all of the gods come to his house on that Friday. Well, before they arrive, he starts making this giant stew. And in this stew, he goes and talks to his son, a kid by the name of Pelops, P-E-L-O-P-S. He's like, Pelops, good news. The gods are going to come by on Friday. We're having a big dinner party. It's going to be a huge ordeal. And his son's like, that's awesome. What are you making? And Tantalus goes, this new thing. I call it Pelops pie. Pelops goes, what? what's in Pelops pie? And his dad goes, oh, that's easy. Pulls out a knife and stabs his son and kills him. And then chops him up into little pieces and cooks him in to this giant stew and sacrifices his own child, Zeus's grandson, to see if feeding human flesh to the gods will work. Well, the gods show up for dinner and they start eating and the gods immediately can tell something is wrong. Like, where's your son? And he was like, oh, you know, he's around. And Zeus sniffs the stew and he was like, this does not smell right. And he realizes what's going on. He's like, did you, did you kill your son and put him into the stew? And Tantalus is like, oh, you figured it out? <laughs> JK, that was crazy, huh? Good joke. Zeus goes, no, no, it's not. And Zeus ends up having Hades release Pelops and bringing him back up to Earth. He then grabs Tantalus and drags him down to Tartarus and goes, because you tried to trick the gods, you get a special punishment. And he takes Tantalus and puts him into this hole and chains him to the ground. Around his ankle, into the ground, the adamantium chain. Above the hole, he has this giant tree grow that has food growing all over it, like hamburgers and fruit and vegetables just hanging from the tree. And he goes, next up, I'm going to fill the hole with water. And he goes, that, that's it? You're putting me in a hole with a tree and water? And Zeus goes, I am. Now, in order to get free, all you have to do is satiate your hunger. Once you are no longer hungry, you'll be able to leave. He goes, I'm, I'm not hungry right now. Zeus goes, oh, yeah, you are. And all of a sudden, Tantalus has the most ravenous appetite ever. He's like, oh, I'm so hungry. And he reaches up to grab the fruit. But as soon as he reaches up, a wind blows through, and all the limbs go just out of his reach. And as he reaches up, water fills the pit. And he all of a sudden is like, well, I'll get something to drink. So he bends down to get the water. And when he does, the water leaves the pit and absorbs into the ground. And the tree bends down towards him. When he reaches back, and he keeps going back and forth with this hunger that eats at his stomach nonstop. And Zeus goes, all you got to do is eat, and you're free. Tantalus not realizing, there is no way to escape. He is trapped there forever, trying to either reach up or reach down which gives us the word tantalize, to have a thing that is just outside of your reach that you really want to get to, but can't quite get to. That sucks. No.